Good day. Good day to you. That's an old stick. Now I am Braggy. I am the host of the channel for today. And yes, it is another folk tale day. And we do love a good folk tale on this channel. Now today's folk tale comes from the land of Norway. The home of those brave Norwegian Vikings. And let's not forget the ladies too from Norway. Now the other day I was travelling down south. I was in a place, well, a small village, and I came to a mead hall. And well, it was a bit late in the day, and I knocked on the door. It was open, so I walked straight in. And I said, can you put me up for the night? Can you give me some lodgings? I got some coin in my purse. And well, they did that and gave me a nice meal of some parsnips and some venison. And a good horn of mead. And whilst I was there, a strange man walked in. Now you could tell he was strange because he was dressed slightly different to the rest of the people in this village. And although, yes, I am quite posh as a Viking, as you could tell from the clothes I wear, I thought to myself, well, this man is from Norway. <laughs> I can tell that. I've got enough experience as a Viking to know where a man comes from. You know, and after a few minutes, he sat down on a bench and, you know, he, had, he was eating some food. He too had venison and some parsnips, and oh, he loved it. He ate the whole lot up, gobble, gobble. And, you know, I thought to myself, well, I must, must go over and say hello to this man, this stranger. And so I did. You know, I sat down with my horn of mead, and I said, hello, I am Braggy. I come from the town of Dialaby. And, you know, have you heard of that place? And he said, oh, yes. Uh, he, went, he went past there once. And, you know, we got talking about what he did he was a trader and he come from Norway with some furs to trade for some silver to one of the local earls and he's done that and he decided before he went back in the late summer to Norway he was going to walk around and see some of England and I thought oh what a great thing to do and we got talking about folklore and we got talking about stories we've heard and I'll tell him about a story I once heard about this magic island. And he said, oh, braggy, he says. That is a very strange and small world. For where I come from, the fjord I come from, there is indeed a magic island, it is said. And so he told me the story. So before I begin this folk tale, sit down. And, you know, this involves magic. Oh, always wonderful when you've got magic in a tale. So many, many years ago, in the land of Norway, as I said, the home of brave and big Norwegian Vikings, there was a fjord, and the fjord's name was Asfjord. And, you know, it was a typical fjord with high mountains on both sides, and towards the end there was a small village. And in the middle of the fjord, there was speculated to be a magical island. Some people have seen this island, and some people have not. And the island is called Lavoya. A strange name indeed, I sure you'll agree. And so, you know, on many occasions people wake up in the morning and they'll see in the distance this island. And many a time people have tried to row in their long ships towards the island, but as they get closer, the island sinks and sinks and sinks into the sea, until it's seen no more. Some people say it is a long, narrow strip of land, with good fertile grass and small hills. Some folk say that it is home, or used to be home, to Oven folk, the Olvish people. That is another story, and no doubt we will talk about elves in a future video. Now, you know, some men have tried to go and land on this island. Many a men have rowed out and there's long ships or even a long boat if they're smaller. And again, the island disappears under the sea and the waves. One time, a priest who practiced a strange new religion called Christianity came and he went out standing on the prow of a boat being rowed by some men and he was calling out to God to the white Jesus, the white Christ, and again the island disappeared. How strange! And another time a Viking soothsayer did the same thing. 
he indeed actually brought a statue of Thor, thinking that if he could plant this statue on this island, it would disappear no more. But of course, as the island got closer to the boat, and the boat got closer to the island, the island, the magical island, disappeared beneath the waves. And so this went on for generations and generations, over 1200 years ago, maybe even older. And so people get on trying different things and it did not work. No matter what magic they tried, no matter how many times people tried to row to the island, because people wanted to live there. The grass was fertile. People thought, well, this would make a great island to live on. I could build my long house, I could graze my animals, and we could live there. But no matter how many times people tried to land, the island just disappeared into the sea. Some mornings in the morning it would be seen. Some mornings it would not show up at all. I would not be seen for months. In fact, even years. But at the far end of the fjord, there was a small farmstead. And the farmstead was called Oford. Or was it? No, it was actually called Olden. The, fa the farm was called the Olden Farm. Ran by a man, an old farmer, bold in the head, long in the beard. And he carried sword and shield and spear. And he was a farmer of pigs. He had many pigs, rolled of bacon. And one day, a sow, a mummy pig, a mother pig, she had seven little piglets. And this farmer used to let his piglets run wild on the land, this farm. You know, the piglets and the pig would know not to go too far. And if they went too far, the farmer would go and bring them back. And on this very morning, some say it was a Thursday, Thor's day, the god of thunder. And of course, in Anglo-Saxon culture, we call Thor Thunar, the god of thunder, the god of lightning. Some say it was a Friday, but I, I think the day is irrelevant. What happened was quite strange. The mother pig, the sow pig and a piglet decided to take a swim, moving their little legs up and down and they started to go towards the island. The mother pig was saying, hmm, come on little piglets, there must be some wonderful grass on that nice magical island. And so she kept on swimming towards the island. Apparently pigs are very good swimmers. That is something I did not know, and I'm sure you did not know either. And so what do you think happened, folks? Do you think as the pig got closer, the island disappeared and went beneath the waves? No. The island stayed there, the hills and the, fer and the very, very good land stayed there. And so the pig landed, the mother pig, the sow with her piglets, and all day they grazed on the grass, the green grass of this nice magical island called Lavoya. And so it was getting towards dusk. And the pig knew that she had to go back home to the farm. Pigs are very intelligent. She knew where home was. And so she started swimming with the little piglets, moving their legs in the water. And after an hour of swimming, she got back on the beach to Oldham Farm and well, went to bed for the night with a full tummy of nice grass. And so this happened for a few more days. The pig got up in the morning knowing that all the grass around the farm was mostly et by all the other pigs, she saw an opportunity to go and graze on this magical island where the grass was greener than anything you've ever seen. And so every morning with the little piglets she swam moving the two little legs and the two little back legs and the little piglets behind were swimming. I sure now if you close your eyes you can imagine the pigs and see them swimming in the sea. I can. I hope it wasn't a stormy day. Stormy weather boys, we don't want that. And so again the pig landed and all day they grazed on the very nice grass. There's a word but I can't think of it. Often the way in these folk tales when you can't think of a word. And so you know all day and all afternoon they grazed, they had their belly full of grass. 
If I was a pig, I would want a belly full of grass. I'm sure you would too. And again, you know, they set back before the sun was setting and they landed on the beach. They went back to bed near the old farmer's house. Now the farmer, he was a wise man. As I said, he was bold. So you know he was old. And he had a beard, a long beard. And he saw that the pigs in the morning were going to the magical island. And he thought to himself, ah, I know a trick. I know something I could do here. Because he remembered being told by his father and his grandfather that iron diffuses magic. And so, as I put my knife away, my sea axe, he got a collar around the older pig, the sow, the mother pig, and decided to hang a knife in its sheath below the neck of the pig. So when she swam out in the morning, she would take the knife with her. Because iron is magical. You would not believe that, folks, but it is. And so the morning came. The pig thought, what's this hanging around my neck? And the little piglets looked up, thinking that's a strange thing you got around your, your neck, mother. But, you know, they ignored it. They were pigs. All they knew how to do, what to do, was to eat. And eat grass. Until the day came and they got butchered and were fed for our dinner. Mmm, bacon. And so the pig swam again with a little pause. And the little pig swam, following the mother. But as soon as she landed on the beach on Lavoya Island, something strange happened. For the iron knife, the sea axe, diffused and killed off the magic. And from that day, the island has never disappeared and remained there in the bay, in the fjord. Now the farmer, being wise, he realised this had happened. Because after all, he planned it. He loved a good plan to the old farmer. And, you know, he rowed out on his little long boat. It wasn't a long ship, it was a lot smaller. So they called him a long boat. Perhaps you know different. And he came and he landed on the beach. And he is said to be the first man in the district ever to step foot on Lavoya Island. And he made a claim to, to a bit of land. He was not a greedy man, for the island was quite vast. And the hills were big. And the green pastures were very, very green and very good for grazing. And so he was the first to settle. And after that, many a farmer... And many a man and woman came and settled on Lavoya Island. The end of the tale. Now still today people live on that island. It is still very green. And like I say, some folk say that it was once inhabited by the elves. Magic folk. Folk that can curse you and do strange things. And perhaps that is where the curse of the island came from. How it kept on sinking. Now I do hope you enjoy this story. It does remind me, in a slight way, of a story about how to trick a troll. When in Sweden, people used to see a thing called troll lights. And you may be asking yourself, Braggy, what are troll lights? Well, troll lights are where, at night, the treasure of trolls can be seen. For trolls are well known for keeping hordes of treasure, often in cauldrons, round metal basins, riveted together out of steel, mild steel. And, you know, people used to go and look for these lights and it is said that if you walk up to the lights and blink, the light would disappear and flick out, not to be seen again that night, or even for weeks and weeks, or months. 